Hello, everyone, and welcome to this hands online. Sorry, we're starting a bit late. Technology doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. <laughs> but we're glad that you're joining us today for this hands online session. And I'm excited because I am joined with my colleague and friend, Jill Landreth, who will wave to you right now. So welcome to this hands online learning, hands -online learning session from the AIM Center for Math and Science Education. At the AIM Center, we are committed to a world that's more equitable through math and science education. And you can learn more about our work and what we do, our partnerships at our website. And we'll invite you later on, of course, to look at our website for resources and other um, events that are coming up. So today we're going to get started. And we definitely want to remind you that the Q&A feature is something that you can use throughout this time. Make sure it's set to everyone so that you can see and um, others can see your questions or comments. We'll invite you to communicate with us in that way, but also we'll ask you if you need um, something reset or maybe a task that we do or a step that we show in our activity today to be redone, that you would just let us know. We, we really wanna communicate with you and to um, have this session as open and as comfortable as possible. So as Jill and I were, preparing for the session together. It's on circular weaving, but we also thought about sharing different ideas of yarn and weaving. And we were kind of just going down memory lane of our own childhood, our own families. And so we had a question to pose to you as well. What memory of yarn weaving do you have from your childhood? So maybe you'd like to share that in the chat right now. Do you have a memory of some kind of yarn weaving that you saw or experienced as in your childhood or growing up? And Jill and I will share some of the things that we saw. Jill, why don't you go ahead and go first when we were sharing? Oh, you're on mute. My apologies. Hello, everyone. Um, so when I was thinking about yarn weaving, I was thinking about my grandmas, both of them. So my grandmother, she did a lot of knitting on my mom's side. And my grandmother on my dad's side did crochet. And I feel like that's similar to weaving. Uh, you're, it's all one piece of string that's all woven together. And um, on my dad's side, she used to always make these dolls that would cover the toilet paper with her skirt. So she would put a doll on top, create a little outfit for her, and then the skirt would cover a couple pieces of uh, rolls of toilet paper, which I thought was really sweet. We have a lot of people sharing in the chat, weaving place mats with construction paper. So we did a session, maybe a previous hands online session you were at where we did some weaving with paper. Yeah. Um, Jennifer sharing, um, my older sister inspired me and we were always making cardboard looms. So I think that that's like the traditional way we might think of weaving is on a loom, whether that's, you know, a huge loom where you can make blankets, but also the ways that um, we've kind of concise that or shrunk it down into other ways we could use cardboard as a loom as well. Cat's mm -hmm. oh, Cradle. I used to do Cat's Cradle. That was a really fun one. Making coasters using a cardboard loom. So lots of people have used cardboard looms before. Mm, pot holders with a plastic loom. Huh. Different things to do there. God's eyes. Is that similar to Cat's Cradle maybe? Mm -hmm. God. God eyes. Is that is that what it's supposed to be? I, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe it's a spell track, not. <laughs> oh, yarn games, using yarn to play hand games, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she's explaining. Two yeah. popsicle sticks crossed and woven over and under in a diamond shape. Oh, I think I did those. I didn't really ever call them God's eyes, though. Yeah, 
Yeah, some other people have seen, I've heard that as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Ojos de Dios. Okay. Thank you for sharing. I think we all have had some of those experiences. I, I too remember my mother who still crochets to this day, um, has crocheted like each of her grandkids, uh, beautiful blankets. Um, and I was reminded as well of um, the past Olympics. There was a swimmer. I think he was a swimmer or a diver, but he was caught on the side knitting. And um, it seems like it's unusual, but it's really, it really isn't while well, they're um, in different places. And I think we're used to being more used to seeing knitting being done, but he said that he did that before a race to just calm his nerves. And I think that that's true. Some of uh, the making that we do really feeds our soul and is uh, emotionally some, sometimes a supportive for us or just takes us to, to a place that's a little bit more tranquil. So we're going to share with you um, a little bit about what we're going to do today. And that is to uh, make, make this hand weaving project. I'm going to first go over the materials that you need for this project. And so we'll put up the slide here. And we'll go through them. And then as I go into the doc cam to kind of go through our project, we also will give you some substitutions and talk about other things that you might use as well. So you see you need a yarn and paper plate, scissors, marker, pen, pencil, any, anything like that, a protractor. So that might have been something that's unique, a protractor. And you can see in the picture, that's that little um, arc there with numbers on it. And a large plastic needle, that's optional, but you might use that if you, if you have one lying around. So right. when I was looking for uh, my supplies, cause I made several of these, uh, I actually went to the dollar store and I got my yarn at the dollar store, my protractor. I think I got pretty much everything at the dollar store and I have enough to make this project over and over and over again. So um, I think I spent $10 maybe. And I also, I wanted to try different weights. So I got different weights of yarn just to see what that would look like. So um, we were also talking, Aileen and I, if you could do it without the needle. And I think you could because you're just weaving with your fingers. So, or you could just weave with your fingers, I mean. so depending on the weight that you have of the yarn and how far apart you choose to weave. I, am, I don't think that a needle is always completely necessary. So for like little fingers, if they just want to use, if, you know, for little kids, they could just use their fingers and weave, I think. Yeah, definitely. And we're, the first time you do something, you try maybe the ways that people give you the rules or the structure, and then you find ways that are best for you. And I think that that's where we'll go today, where we'll go through this way that we've done it, but of course you probably have some experiences that you can share as well. All right, so we, before we get into our, our project, we just wanted to remind everyone about the STEAM because we always try to look for the ways that science, technology, engineering, arts, and math are present in the things that we do. Sometimes we think of these as very academic, something that only happens maybe within the school walls. But the real um, truth is that valuable STEM learning happens everywhere. It happens in the spaces that we live. And you don't really necessarily have to say, this is where the math is to make something valuable. But I think as educators who are watching today, we wanna see those connections because it really um, helps us connect to our students in ways that are more meaningful than uh, maybe the traditional ways we've done, maybe math or science, technology or engineering. And it can happen in these beautiful ways where all of those things are integrated. So um, I tend to look at the math things because I've been a math teacher and I can tend to notice those things. So as I'm going through the project today and the instructions, you might hear me say some of those um, words around the circle or the parts of a circle, but 
I hope that each of us will just keep our eyes and our ears open for the ways that we're seeing some of these come out um, in the project and maybe in the ways that you can enhance that in your classroom. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'll switch over to my camera. And um, you'll see, oh, I have to take my blur off. There we go. All right, so this is kind of um, an example here of what we're going to do today. And I'm using these smaller plates, but I think Jill, didn't you use a larger plate at the beginning? I did. I actually, well, I wasn't on accident. I got a paper plate that was bigger than my protractor, but I found if I use my protractor to just make a circle and then make the marks that Aileen is going to show you, it worked just fine. Okay. So yeah, so the size of the plate doesn't really matter. So I have one that is bigger here. So of course, you know, you, you still have that same circle shape. And if you use your protractor on there and and draw, we can still divide um, this over into sections, or we can use a smaller one, um, colored ones, any ones that you might have there will still work. Now in the video that um, is gonna be on our one page resource, we have, I have, I think making a circle that's like your template and then putting it over um, the plate. You don't have to really do that. This is, this, we're gonna to try to be accurate as possible, but this is kind of forgiving because we're making marks that are dividing this, this circle into equal parts. So one of the things that we have to do is kind of just find the center of the circle. Part of that maybe is going to be eyeing it a bit. Um, I love that some of the protractors have this little dot, kind of helps me kind of figure out where I wanna choose where the center is. Because what we want to do is we want to draw a straight line so that we can have um, kind of a boundary of where to put the protractor. So, and I'm working on the back side of the plate because I'll do my yarn and weaving in, inside. Um, so it kind of pushes out from the plate a little bit. But I don't know, I think you could do it any, any way that you'd like to. So here we have our, we found our center and then we drew in the diameter, which pretty much cuts that circle in half. And then in the protractor, you'll see that you have measurements of the degrees, the angles of degrees. And it usually starts at 10, and then goes by tens all the way around to 180. And then the other row will go backwards from 10 to 180. So we're going to divide this in 20 degrees. Is that right, Joel? Let me forget. Yes, 20. 20. 20 degrees. So in a smaller plate like this, you might want to make your marks inside and then we'll just extend them. But if I was on a larger plate, I could just make the marks right outside of my protractor. So we're going to just count by 20s and then make a mark for every 20. And that mark is what will follow to put these little slits inside of the, the plate. So a circle is um, a circle is 360 degrees. And so I, as I was thinking about the ways we could change it, because that's one of the conversations that Jill, Jill and I has, like, what else could we do to change the design? I was thinking, well, what if the number of slits changed? I, I hadn't thought of that before. But other ways to divide 360 into equal parts, you could just read we draw the slits in different ways. All right, so that's pretty much what we use our protractor for is just measuring those degrees. Um, of course, you could eye it the best that you can, or you could cut it in maybe half and do 45s and then a few more. Um, I don't think that that would change it too much, but it, would, it just creates a sense of balance. So, um, and symmetry. So I'm just extending those where those are to kind of make the, the slits that I need to make. Uh, and just really following that with my eye to the edge all the way around. And if you all had a 
big paper plate, a larger paper plate, you you are ready already to just make your slits because they're already probably at the edge. So this is where I said like a lot of this, this is um, related to the circle, which I know students start studying very formally, I think in maybe sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Just learning that half a circle is 180, <clears throat> the entire circle is 360. So on each of those is where we're going to cut our slits. Oh, that one looks a little bit off here. I think it should be right here. And we're not going to make too large of a slit, but just like the little bit of the lip here, because our yarn is going to get kind of stabilized in there. So you can see here, we're just cutting a little bit piece off there so that we can stabilize the yarn at those, those spots. I guess you would need it to be longer if you use thicker yarn. What do you think, Joel? Thicker yarn might. Yeah, I think I've seen a couple people cut them in notches instead of just a little slit. So do a little triangle in it mm -hmm. so that it rests in there easier. So maybe with thicker yarn, that would sit in a slot better. And then there's different weights of paper plates too. So if you had more of like the harder cardboard instead of the thinner, that might be help stabilize a thicker yarn as well if you had a thicker yarn you were using. Alrighty. So it's hard to tell on the, on the, on the front side, but you can see that I made these little slits all the way around, roughly 20 degrees apart from each other. And now I'm ready to put in kind of the foundation of what I'm going to um, weave around. Sorry, Aileen. Yes. Um, someone is asking if you'd mind explaining the beginning again, where mm -hmm. we place the dot. Oh yeah. With the big plate. With, with the big plate? Sure. Uh -huh. So if you have a big plate like this, you want to find the center. I'm, I'm really using also the center circle in a plate, which is kind of helpful. So I can figure out if I want this dot right in the center, kind of where it would go. And I just kind of, I, if you don't have a dot like that, then you could just eye it yourself. I mean, you could say, okay, well, that's about the center. It's about right. And then you just want to make a line straight across. Now, if that isn't exactly, exactly the center, I don't think it's going to ruin everything here, but it's just going to give you like that kind of stabilization there where you want to anchor everything else to. So finding a center point of the plate and then drawing a line straight across to kind of cut that plate in half. That, that gives you a place to kind of put your protractor because even if you don't have a circle cut in there. Okay, so for example, here's one. This one doesn't have a circle, but it does have like this little notch and that tells me that it needs to fall on the center. And then the, the line would have to fall right underneath the protractor. So then I would measure that 20 degrees and it would be right there go all the way around by 20. So that's what it would look on like on a bigger plate. And then the half one is this one right here. All right, does that help? That helps. Right, so if you have any other questions, yes, please do ask in the chat room. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we were going to put in our yarn here. So I'm just going to tie a knot at the end. 
so that it'll catch into these little slots here. Put it in here and pull it. There you go. And then if I turn it around, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through every notch here and through this, it, it'll fall through the center and kind of intersect. Then I'll take the next notch over and then the next notch over at the bottom. You can think about your colors later on. I think the first time I do it, like I've done this is I did it with two different colors and then added a third different color. This is really just getting familiar with the project. But I think as, as you revisit this, you're gonna really be conscious of color scheme and the color and the placement of the colors where you want the colors to be. So this first color that goes on the circular weave here just intersects at that middle point and becomes our foundation of how we're going to start the weaving in the middle. So we're gonna stop right there. We can go ahead and cut that. Jill and I were talking about how to stop these other day. Like leave, you could leave a little bit more yarn right here and tie these two together. Um, looks like I didn't do that. So I'm just gonna tie a knot here so that it'll stay in place. If you have littles, you could also use a probably a piece of tape on the back just to anchor that down. Aileen, I think your camera is frozen. Oh, there we go. It's back. It's back? Okay. I think so, yeah. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Any questions around where we're at right here? I know that maybe uh, there was a glitch here. So anyone has any questions? Just pause a little bit there and I'll start getting my other piece ready. All right, so I am using a plastic needle. How do you anchor, how to anchor the last piece? Is that what the question is? So how do we anchor where we end here? I just I just did a little knot and pushed it up. But if you have enough yarn right here, you could tie them together, um, both of those extensions. Um, if it's really if it's uh, really hard to get that knot in the right place, a piece of tape in your on top of your yarn would also work. Any way to kind of keep that stabilized? Good question. All right, so I'm gonna use a second color here to put my, start my weaving. Aileen, someone asked, do we cut the outer dots? when place, then place the yarn? This, the, um, the little slits, yes. I cut all of those all the way around because that allowed the, the yarn to fall into the plate a little bit and get stabilized. I think that's what they were asking. All right, so I'm going to thread my plastic needle if you're using a needle. If not, maybe you need a knot at the end or something to help you kind of anchor where that first piece is going. I am going to do a knot at the end here, and I doubled mine. I found that for littles, the, the needle kept coming unthreaded if they just did single. So I'm just gonna show the way that I did it with my little one because I just doubled it up and then put it 
put a knot at the end. And the knot gets kind of hidden underneath the weaving. But this will keep that, that needle from coming out every time they pull up. All right. So we're going to start um, as close to the center as possible. And the pattern that you use to go around and start your weaving is really up to you. I'm gonna do two under and then go over two. And you can see that it, it's just first gonna be in the center. So it's gonna show a little bit of, of um, it feels a little bit chaotic at first, I would say, until you start seeing the pattern coming around. So it'll take a few cycles to do that. And we don't want to pull it too tight. So I'll go under these two and then over two and under these two. And it just takes a little time for it to start forming. So over. Just go through a few and then it'll start kind of showing a pattern. So let's see, over, under, over and under. When I started doing this, I was pulling it really tight. And then when I saw my daughter doing it, she wasn't. And I just really like the texture of keeping it a little bit more loose when you're going around. All right. So you can see that the circle is starting to form. I'm starting to get some texture here and in the way that it's coming around the colors. And I'm going to keep working. And I hope you're working on yours too. We're going, I'm going to go till my yarn is, is gone, which is about the length of my, my arms width. So we're going to just keep working on this. And I'm, I invited Jill to just show us a few more yarn projects that you might want to try in your classroom or at home and just keep working on your circular weaving while she's talking. She's gonna show some amazing pictures. So it's just a time to kind of fall back and listen, but we'll check in as soon as she's done where you're at with the circular weaving and show you how to do the next design part to finish it off. Thanks, Celine. So uh, when I was researching different types of yarn projects, I myself, I knit. And so I love doing different things with yarn. Um, and I had come across this a few times. It's called finger knitting. And you literally knit with your fingers. So you can see in this photo, it's a little bit how to. So you're weaving the yarn through your fingers enough times where there's two loops. And then all you do is take the bottom loop, lift it over the top, and you can weave it again and then do that again. You can see in the last photo, you're left with a knit, a long knit piece. And when I had first saw this, I was thinking that's very pretty, but I wasn't sure, you know, what to do with that. <laughs> and so um, I've seen others where people have knit hats, knit blankets with their fingers this way. And I thought that that was just so interesting and simple, like kids could do this, you know, children could do this. And um, so I, I really enjoyed this. The second thing is also called finger knitting. It's not this though, it's creating loops. So you create a row of loops and all you do is take the yarn and pull it up through the loop. And I've seen people use big chunky blankets or excuse me, chunky yarn. And it creates these big, beautiful blankets. You can do different color yarn. And it's very simple. For me as a knitter, I really like imagining what is happening with my yarn. 
And for some reason, I could never picture it. I knew what my needles were doing. I knew that I was supposed to loop over the yarn and pull it back through. But that imagination of what that looked like, I couldn't get until I saw this. And I've tried this several times, just creating loops and pulling the yarn through. And it creates beautiful patterns. You can change your yarn, like I said. But for me, I understood my, what my yarn was doing when I started playing with this. Um, and it, to me, it's just, it's an incredible way to understand what's happening and see the patterns. And it's simple. It's very, very simple. I, sometimes I think with knitting, it becomes, um, it took me a long time to learn that. <laughs> now, other people may pick it up very quickly. I myself did not. And then the last thing I found was when I was a kid, I used to do um, friendship bracelets. And for me, the way I did them was I had my thread and it was kind of like macrame. So uh, I would tie them in a certain way. But I found so many instances where people use this cardboard. It's very similar to what we're doing with the paper plates, but you put a hole in the center, tie your yarn, put the tied part through that centerpiece, and then you use the brackets, basically a weaving pattern. So you're pulling them into different parts of the plate and through the back comes your friendship bracelet. And in the reference material, I've put links to all these different projects. So if you'd like to look at them, you can um, dive a little bit more into them. But the fact that this makes um, stripes and that I used to make with knotting. I've tried this one as well. And the patterns are beautiful. And again, it just depends where you put your notches and where you move the string to. But it's it's very beautiful. And I intend to do this a lot more. I found all of this very, very fascinating. Um, I don't know if folks, how folks are with their knitting or excuse me, with their weaving, how far along they've gotten. Aileen, how are you doing? So I cut that a little short. I thought maybe I would just do it a little bit more. So I wanted, I'm great, this is a great pause because I wanted to show one way you could just tran transition to a different color is just to tie them together and then just to keep going. Um, so that's one way if you wanted a different color around, you could do that as well. But maybe we just um, have a little bit more time to see how everyone else is doing. Um, if in the chat you want to let us know, or if you how's your circular weaving coming? Are you at a point where you think it's wide enough? And that's just arbitrary how wide you want it to be, or the color you want to add. So Eileen, someone's asking if you can go back to the middle part. Mm -hmm. To the middle part, how I started. Um, I'm not sure. Oh my gosh. Ruby, were you having something in particular? Um, my computer just went out. Can you still hear me? We can still hear you just fine. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure right now. I can't see anything. So give me just a second. I'm not sure what middle, she was answering. This is the middle part of the plate. So I think maybe just how to get started with that piece in the middle. Um, I know it looks like I was using blue here, but this is just where the blue lines were intersecting and just the piece of, of um, the yarn that's showing as I try to just start the red. So pretty much what you see me doing now, Ruby, I'm going to over and two under is what I started doing right at the center. It just, it just takes a little bit more time to go through some cycles before you'll see that pattern generating. Um, just don't pull it too, too tight. And then as you keep going around, you're just doing, I'm just doing two over, two under. If you wanted to do over, under, um, just one and one, you could also do that. But that's just how it got started. I did have a knot at the at the end of my yarn, though, so that 
it would just help it stabilize a little bit. Was there another question? I think you can see that now my my um, blue is coming to an end. So I put blue around it. And then this is just another place that you'd want to um, either do a knot or um, if you have some sewing background, then you could just do a knot here, or you could just tie a knot to these two that are together. Let's see what I want to do here. Probably want to just take it into this last one. So it'll be a little bit more stabilized and then I'll probably put a knot right there. And I'll probably just put a knot here with these two that are sticking out and then just kind of tuck it underneath. There we go. Just like that. And so like we said, you could you could um you could do different patterns, you could do different colors, you could do it wider or leave it just as I did in the in the red, very small. And the one I showed you that we did for practice was the red one. Looks like I was pulling it a little bit more taut here so that you could see this triangular pattern that was coming. And this one, the tension's not as, as tight. So the pattern's a little bit different. And the blue seems a little bit thicker than the red as well. So the weight is a little different. So we're going to get started to look at the design we're going to do around, around here. And I wanted to show some pictures of string designs. And I put those in the slides because I'm. this is the idea that we're going to use is based on these string designs. So here in the picture, you're going to see some uh, string designs that were done with just string and on Heavyweight paper, you could use maybe cardstock or um, cardboard. You don't want it too thick because you are taking it through that space. So your needle you're gonna use is, is definitely a metal needle. And you see the triangle there, the circle, and then like two triangles intersecting there. These are, these are string designs that are done with just places on the shape that you're following a pattern. <laughs> that idea of pattern is just resonating throughout our whole project today. We're going to do something that's like the center one. So the center one that you see in the circle shape is what we're going to use to, to finish off our weaving here. And so that's where these come from, from string designs. So I'm going to go back to my um, dot cam to show you how to put that in. I'll use purple. but um, I remember Jill asking me about this one because I think in the video, it wasn't really clear what I was using as an anchor or as a mark. So Aileen, really quick before you uh, start that, someone asked mm -hmm. if you wrapped the left going, left going to the side to catch the next notch instead of across the plate. And if you wove to the outside edge, it seems you could take it off the plate. Has anyone tried that? I have not. <laughs> no, I haven't. That I, have, I have seen a couple of YouTube videos on how to remove your circle weaving. I hadn't watched them though. So I believe you could. I don't know if your method would allow that. Mm -hmm. But that would be really cool because then you would have coasters or hot plate, you know, um, pads. That's, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. If you do that, please send us pictures mm -hmm. <laughs> at Ames EDU and tag us in them. Or if you share them on Instagram or social media, love to see it. So we're, um, we're gonna look at how to put the, the last circular piece here. 
And so to do that, we're I'm going to just pick a notch to anchor this. And I put a knot again into that thread. I'm going to use purple. Um, usually I use a different color for the last one, but it's totally up to you. And what I'm doing is I'm thinking about what notch will give me the line closest to the tangent of this circle that I've created inside. Um, that's just because I don't want my string design to cover this circle. But if it doesn't matter to you, you could you could do it in any, not I guess, other notch that you wanted to do outside more. I think I'm going to pick this one because that's pretty close. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that as a pattern. So then I'm going to go to this one next. That's one over from the one I already tried. And then this one from down here, that's one over going this way. And I'm just going to follow the same thing. So next one will be here. And then I'll go to this one, one over here. And then I'll just keep going all the way around. I'm trying to pay attention I don't skip one because I've done that before. And also, you'll start seeing what looks like a little star, I think. And you will start overlapping to the ones that you already went through. And when you completely overlap, that's when you know you can stop. If you have any questions around this, you could, of course, ask in the chat. You can see that these are coming to points down here. So that's kind of where I want it to go all the way around. And this is where we talked a lot about what we're going to show right after I'm done is what other variables are there? There we go. All right, so you can see the purple urine that I put all the way around and all those coming to a point. All I have to do is finish this one off in the back. I could just you know, a knot maybe. Or like we said, you know, you could even use a piece of tape. I'm just going to put a knot in there so that it anchors it into the that little notch there. So by this point, you have I have like I think three three pieces of yarn going through the notches, at least, and that's where you would want to just be cognizant of the weight. So if your notches um, weren't deep enough, thinking about making them a little deeper, depending on the yarn. There we go. We wanted to share a little bit of the variables because, because like Jill said, she she kind of explored this a little bit more, and so we have some pictures. Oh, you're on mute. Every time, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is just me trying Aileen's project, um, the way that exactly how she did it. And the blue parts, the blue string, I just call the stars. I don't know, you know, for me, that's what it is. Um, and then in the next one, you can see, I was really, I, I was reminded of a spirograph 
So I don't know if anyone's ever used them. It's a little circle. You put your pen in one of the holes and then you circle it around another circle and it creates patterns. And so in this one, you can see I cut my notches very deep just because I wasn't sure how much string I wanted to use and I knew it would pile up. Um, but this one has no weaving in it. This is just doing the star pattern. So I did the star pattern in the blue first, um, the way that you all just did it. And then for me, the easier way to know what I was doing is I started straight across and then I count my notches. So three notches over, two notches over. I don't know if that makes sense what I'm saying, but that's the way I tried it. Someone said they love the spirograph. <laughs> so did I. Um, and then in the next slide, for this one, I wanted to play with weight of yarn and also how tightly I pulled the yarn. So you can see the white on the outside. I pu pulled it very tight, even though it was towards the outside of the weaving. And it started to lift and create, create weight instead of, I don't know what the word is, length? I don't know. Um, and then I tried two of the star patterns on the outside. So the lighter green and the white. And in doing these two star patterns, the first star pattern had four notches in between before I reinserted it. And the other one I think had two. And in the next one, um, I did it exactly the way our project was. And then on the outside, I just skipped one notch and did it all the way around. And it created a nice circle pattern, kind of like a frame on the outside of the weaving, which I found interesting. There's so many different ways you could, you could weave your, 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 both your weaving and the star pattern. I think it'd be very interesting. I think Jennifer had mentioned trying to take it off. I think that that'd be the next thing maybe I'll try to, to investigate. <laughs> These are gorgeous. I love the ideas of just changing the variables and seeing what happens. I think that that's part of our curiosity and our creativity, that sometimes we think we're going to get something that we expect, and then sometimes we get something we don't expect. And sometimes that's a beautiful, a beautiful thing to get something you don't expect. Um, I hope that you'll be able to do your own weaving and finish these projects that you've started. Um, and I hope that you thought about just the ways that you saw steam happening. You know, we talked about definitely how beautiful these are and how we're using different colors and using patterns, but patterns are also mathematics. And so maybe you thought about the shapes that we were talking about, like circle and diameter and things like that. Um, technology, we're using tools, we're using common tools, yarn and paper plates and uh, scissors, but we're using those tools to make something and to learn with them. So that's definitely part of the technology that's there. And I thought it was interesting because as we were getting ready for this session and then discussing it later, I noticed like tension was used, the idea of tension, <clears throat> the idea of weight. And those are all things that we talk about in science. Like what are the ways that we can um, pull something tighter and what does that mean? And um, artists use that to alter things that they do in art. But when we do it in meaningful ways to see what kind of um, project that we'll get, it's, it's kind of fun. So um, I hope that this is a way that you can bring this to your children, no matter if they're toddlers and you're doing it side by side with them, or you're a teacher and you're gonna do a project all together. These are some different ways that you might um, integrate this. Um, someone saying that they used a larger plate Oh, someone had asked me what size plate did they use and mm -hmm. what size plate. And so I just cut off my edges and it was because it didn't fit the, the protractor. And so okay. I just created a circle. Yeah. And you could even, you know, get a circle if you um, bought something at the store and there was a circular cardboard in there, you, you have your, your piece to start weaving on and there's lots of things that you can do. And we had someone who um, did this project with us and did it on a square. 
and she kind of made her own circle over the square. So there's lots of ways to kind of change this up and to think about different ways that you can, can do this and alter it. So I want to um, extend a big thank you to Jill, who joined us today. Um, she is uh, working on a YouTube video that really shows people how to make in different ways. And so if you're interested in following her, um, there'll be some resources on the one pager. And we'll definitely include that so that you can be a maker yourself in different ways. And um, we're encouraging that making is something that we all do. And we're all ready to be learners and to just um, share with each other. How long did it take for the advanced designs you made? Oh, good question. Uh, oh. Uh, honestly, it didn't take much longer than it did to make this because all I did was add one more round of the star design. So I just did one more, however long it took you to make the star design, it was just one more session of doing that. Mm -hmm. Like one more layer. Yeah, so yeah. not long. Teachers are, are really conscious sometimes of the time because they want to classroom time or, or things like that is definitely helpful for to gauge it. Right. But I definitely want to have some simple projects probably for younger ones and then let students go who are older and, and explore and the variations on their own. So um, we want to share our website to conclude here to make sure that you know where to go for the one page resource around circular weaving that also has other resources about things that we talked about today, the hand weaving, um, the making loops, different bracelets, all things that are kind of around that yarn usage of weaving. And we hope that you'll visit our website um, and see those resources. And just to remind you that next week or next month, our next hands online session is around cooking. So we're gonna be doing cooking with steam and we'll also have a guest who'll be joining on that session. And so we hope that you'll join us for um, cooking with steam and to think about the ways that even something we do probably every day or at least once a week is cooking and how there's so many ways to explore that are delicious as well. So thank you again, everyone for joining us and we hope that you have a good rest of your day. Aims. See you next time.